Hi friends, it's Carla. Welcome to Faith at Home. Before we start talking about our book club stories, let's thank God. Thank you God for giving us life. Thank you God for giving us life. Thank you God for giving us life right where we are. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, praise the Lord right where we are. Amen. And if you are giving an offering somewhere, now is a great time. I do want to say another special thank you to all the Faith Formation friends who brought offerings in March and April and May, and to all the kids who did a choir kid, who did the choir show, the musical, and helped collect offerings. We put all that money together, and we were able to send over five hundred dollars to help the people of Ukraine through Lutheran disaster response. So thank you so much. Your offerings really do make a difference. All right. Now let's talk about our book club stories. We have two. We're doing a children's book and we're doing a Bible story. And let's find out first what they have in common. You ready? We're going to do some actions. First, we're going to pretend we're climbing up a tree. Maybe can't go that fast. Climbing. And then watching or looking. And then walking. And then eating. All right, so these are things that people do all the time. Especially kids like to climb. All kinds of things. And we all watch and learn and observe or look for someone or look for something that we've lost. Lots of watching and looking. And then of course, we walk every day, here and there and everywhere, and eating. Necessary for life every day. So that's where we're gonna start. Those four things, those four actions are in both of our stories. And then something that's not an action, also in both stories, and that is being curious. You've probably already figured out the story, but here's one more clue. <laughs> I bet you know for sure by now. We are going to read some Curious George. This one is called Curious George Goes to Camp. There's lots of different Curious George stories. But usually George makes a mess or causes trouble for someone because he's so curious. But the great thing about George is he tries really hard. He never intends to make a mess or bother someone. He just does things without understanding them or without asking permission because he's so curious. He also keeps trying and trying and trying to fix whatever he might have messed up. So that's a great thing about George. And a good lesson for us. We're always going to mess up sometimes. Trying to fix it is a great, a great thing to do. And asking forgiveness and being forgiven and doing our best to make it better. Curious George goes camping. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. This weekend, George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, had special plans. They were going camping. At the campsite, the man with the yellow hat unpacked their gear while George looked at all the tents. He saw tents for big families and one just the right size for a little puppy. There were even tents on wheels. Would you like to help me put up our tent, George? The man asked. George was happy to help. It would not be hard to set up a tent, he thought. <laughs> but it wasn't easy. George, why don't you fill one bucket of water at the pump? His friend suggested, we'll need it by our campfire later when we roast marshmallows. Mmm, marshmallows. George loved marshmallows. He couldn't wait to try them. Mm, comes that eating. Now don't wander off and get in trouble, the man warned. But George didn't hear him. He was already gone. At the pump, George worked the handle up and down. Soon his bucket was full. On the way back down the trail, mm, there's that walking, he saw a family packing up. George watched a girl pour her bucket of water on a campfire. Fire sizzled out. George thought that looked like fun. 
he poured his bucket of water on the next campfire. Hey, yelled the camper, we weren't finished with that yet. The camper began to chase George, but George didn't mean to cause trouble. Now he only wanted to hide. He ran into the forest as fast as he could, but the camper's footsteps followed close behind. George ran faster and faster. The footsteps came closer and closer until suddenly they were passing George. Why, <laughs> it wasn't the camper chasing George now. It was a deer. What fun to run with a deer. Forgetting all about the camper and the marshmallows, George ran after the deer. But a little monkey cannot run as fast as a deer in the woods. Before long, George was lost and all alone. He felt tired and stopped to rest. At first he was worried. He was very far from camp. But there were lots of other animals to keep George company. He saw a lizard sunning on a rock and a squirrel chattering in a tree. Then he saw the tail of a black and white kitty peeking out from under the bush. He was curious. Would the kitty like to play? George gently pulled the kitty out. Uh oh. But it was not a kitty. It was a skunk. And it was scared. The skunk lifted its tail and sprayed. Woo! The spray smelled awful. The animals tried to get away. George wanted to get away too, but he couldn't. The smell was all over him. How would he ever get rid of that awful smell, he wondered. Too bad he couldn't take a bath in the woods. Then George had an idea. He could wash the smell off in the creek. George jumped into the cold water. He splashed and scrubbed, but he was still smelly. And now he was wet too. What could he do? George thought and thought if he climbed up a tree to dry off, would the smell blow away? No. Even high and dry up in the tree, George did not smell better. Poor George. He wished he hadn't wandered so far from camp. He wished he were roasting marshmallows with his friend. Suddenly, George heard footsteps heading towards him. Someone was coming. It was the forest animals, but they ran right by him. They had seen something scary, and George saw it too. It was a fire. George had gotten into trouble for putting out one fire, but this fire wasn't in the campground. This was an emergency. Quickly, George climbed down the tree and grabbed his bucket. He scooped it full of water in the creek. Then, being careful not to spill, he climbed back up and swung from branch to branch through the trees. When George got close enough to the fire, he reached down and poured the water on the flames. Out went the fire with a big hiss. Just then, George's friend rushed out of the forest with a ranger. George, he called. I was afraid you would be here. It's a good thing you were here, George, the ranger said. We saw smoke from the campground, but you put this fire out just in time. George was glad to help. And the man with the yellow hat was glad to see that George was safe. But he had a funny look on his face. George, he asked, what is that smell? <laughs> Back at the campsite, George's friend helped him get rid of the awful smell. After a strange bath in tomato juice, George smelled fine. Then the man with the yellow hat invited the ranger to cook dinner with them over their own small campfire. Fires can be nice if you're careful, said the ranger. George agreed, especially for roasting marshmallows. Ah, George finally gets to eat the marshmallows. Well, what do you think? Is being curious good? Sometimes, when we watch, we learn. When we ask questions, we learn. Is being curious bad? Sometimes, <laughs> if we run off the path and get lost, could be a bad thing. Hmm, so fires are good if you're careful. And curiosity is good sometimes. Many things in life are like that how to figure out when it's good and when it's bad or how much to do. So in our Bible story today, speaking of curious, there's a very short story in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, called Zacchaeus the Tax Collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man named Zacchaeus lived there. He was a chief tax collector and was very rich. Just so you know, people didn't usually like the tax collectors. They tended to take more money than they should and keep some for themselves, which was not a nice thing to do. Zacchaeus 
wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was a short man. Hmm, so he's curious about Jesus, but he can't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree. Oh, we're climbing trees again. He wanted to see Jesus who was coming that way. Jesus reached the spot where Zacchaeus was. He looked up and said, Zacchaeus, he knew his name. Come down at once. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this. They began to whisper among themselves. They said, Jesus has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up. He said, look, Lord, here and now, I give half of what I own to those who are poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back. I will pay back four times the amount I took. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. You are a member of Abraham's family line. The son of man came to look for the lost and save them. Hmm. So Zacchaeus had been doing kind of bad things, but a visit with Jesus and the surprise that Jesus knew his name and wanted to come to his house changed him. He decided to be more fair and to be more generous. Just that one little visit with Jesus changed his whole life. Good thing he was curious about Jesus. So did you hear them all? Climb the tree, look for Jesus, walked home with Jesus afterwards and ate some dinner together. Same things, plus that common curiosity. Before I go, let's sing the old song about Zacchaeus, okay? It might be new to you. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for stories to teach us about how others are and how we can be. Help us be generous and curious in the safe ways to learn about your world and all your people. Amen. Bye friends. See you next time.